Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In today's video we're going to be talking through palpation of the ankle joint. And so when we're thinking about palpation of the ankle joint, or any joint for that matter, we're going to be feeling for swelling, deformity, laxity, tone, but perhaps most importantly pain, as this may tell us the most about our patient's condition. So as to not slow your video down, we're not going to be comparing the affected and unaffected sides. But of course, in practice, we always want you to compare left and right so you can come up with your patient diagnosis. Right, let's get to it. Let's get clinical. So now we're going to look at palpation of the foot and ankle in the anterior view. If the patient sub, uh, reports subjectively that they have pain down the tibia or the front of the shin bone, it's worth palpating a few key structures to see what's at fault. Most commonly people will get pain down these anterior structures either from heavy amounts of impact or repetition particularly in the presence of a tight calf or poor footwear. So for instance it's common for runners to get shin splints um, or jumpers that have to land quite heavily will also get irritation around here. But it's not exclusive to these groups. So we're going to start by palpating around the extensor compartment, so the dorsiflexors of the ankle. So we've got tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum and extensor digitorum longus. The first thing we're going to do is just generally get a feel for the tone and press in there and see if they're overactive or if they reproduce the patient's pain. Sometimes what can happen is the action of the extensors pull against the, the periosteum, the bone lining of the tibia. And you'll need to check to see if you can reproduce the symptoms by coming in laterally and up against the bone and see if that's where their tenderness lies. All the way down, even as far as the anterior subtalar. The other common place for this uh, irritation on the bone from the soft tissue pulling is in the flexor compartment. I'll show you on this leg so you, ca you guys can see. And it's in here. So you trace the tibia around till it becomes soft tissue and you gently sort of claw your fingers in and just press at the soft tissue there and see if that reproduces their symptoms. Another thing to consider is a microfracture in the tibia. And the patient will often complain rather than like a, a dull diffuse ache difficult to localize a more specific pain which are generally located more around mid mid tibia depending on the literature you read so if you have someone that presents with a specific shin pain you can tap up and down the tibia and see if you can find a spot that reproduces their pain if you can, this can be another sign that indicates that they have a microfracture in there. From here, we're going to move down to the anterior subtalar joint in this anterior view. And we're just going to feel around the joint. The most common clinical presentation where an abnormality occurs here is in osteoarthritis. So when you're feeling around the joint here, and they have got osteoarthritis, you may feel that the synovium is quite thick, quite boggy and enlarged with or without swelling may be present and redness is not normally there and pain may or may not be there depending on whether the structure is sufficiently irritated. Moving on from here, the last thing to consider is the dorsalis pedis pulse. In clinical practice, you're not often going to be looking at pulses, but if the patient presents with either a sort of cyanosis, so a blue appearance, a pallor, a very white appearance, or an erythema, a very reddened appearance, you may suspect some vascular changes. So we want to check on the pulse to make sure it's healthy. The easiest way to find this, I find in practice, is to find this bumpy bit here, which is the styloid process of the fifth radius swoop up and over the dorsum of the foot until you're roughly somewhere in line with the first and second toe, a little bit more over to the first. And lo and behold, it's there. If the pulse feels thready or it's not consistent and you have these color changes and something that supports that in the history, you'll need to refer to a medical specialist to make sure that they uh, do not need medical intervention. And that concludes our palpation video 
for the foot and ankle in the anterior view. So now we're going to look at palpation of the ankle and foot joints in a lateral and medial view. The first thing we're going to look at, if your patient has reported in the subjective history and ankle inversion sprain, is the perinei group, which will start from the lateral aspect of the leg around here, and will swoop all the way down behind the lateral malleolus, and around here at the perineal tubercle, they will start to subdivide into the brevis, tertius, and longus group. But we can palpate down to the stylo process of the fifth metatarsal here for brevis. So in essence, what I'm saying is if you suspect this ankle inversion injury, we need to palpate all the way down this perineal group. And you simply do that by coming into the lateral aspect of the leg and feeling down. And you're looking for points of tenderness or pain. It's very common with an ankle inversion injury to actually not report pain on this part of the perineal group and more locally at the tissue here. However, if you do feel pain and problems down here, it's a good indicator that you need to take this muscle group into account when setting your therapy plan. So the next thing we're going to consider is the lateral malleolus, or indeed anywhere up on the fibula. And if the history indicates trauma or impact, then we're going to want to feel the bone and trace it up and see if that reproduces a specific exquisite pain that will be caused from a fracture and the periosteum, the bone lining. Moving down from here, the next thing we want to think about are the main groups of ligaments that are usually involved in this inversion sprain. And they are the anterior talofibular ligament, the calcaneofibular ligament, and the posterior talofibular ligament. So to palpate the anterior talofibular ligament, we just have to really think about what the name suggests. So we have a, a talo component, so the talus, and a fibula component here. So you know that that ligament is going to be somewhere between those two points. So that's where we're gonna direct our palpation pressure and see if that reproduces the patient's pain or if we can feel that the tissue feels uh, boggy or thickened or that some sort of injury has occurred there. Moving down from this ATFL, we're going to look at the CFL, the calcaneofibular ligament. So as the name suggests, calcaneus and fibula, we're gonna feel somewhere between those two points and see if that reproduces pain or has an abnormal feel as if the tissue's boggy or been stressed in some way. And then similarly for the PTFL, posterior talofibular ligament, we're going to feel back here. And that covers us for the lateral aspect of the, uh, the foot for palpation, foot and ankle. So we're just going to ask Polly to bend this knee up and we're going to consider the medial aspect. If in the subjective history, the patient describes a sort of horseshoe shaped pain or a, an L shaped pain around the malleoli, this is normally to do with irritation to the flexor tendons. So similar to as we did with the perinei group, we're gonna start higher up and see if some of the flexor muscles, the deeper ones, have been irritated. So we're gonna come into the medial aspect and palpate down and again, see if there's pain or irritation there. And if there's a lot of irritation down it, we know that this is gonna be a big player in the pathology and will be needed to taken into account for the rehab program. And we're gonna swoop and feel all the way around the medial malleolus. And then we're gonna drift off to the navicular. The navicular tuberosity is a little bump on the, outs, uh, on the inner part of the foot here. And this is where the tibialis posterior tendon comes in and helps support the arch of the foot. So as we palpate down for the flexor group, we want to drift off down here into the navicular point. And again, we're looking for pain provocation, preferably of the patient's reported symptoms. From there, you also might find in clinical practice people reporting pain in here. And this can be due to excessive work or um, increased tone in the adductor hallucis muscle. Whilst you don't need to remember this muscle specifically, it will normally be associated with pronation or hyperpronation. So we'll need to address this mechanic either through orthotics or your therapy program. The other thing to consider around here 
is the deltoid ligament. And this is made up of three distinct ligaments that form a sort of triangular shape. And their job is to make sure that the talus, so this bone in here that helps roll the ankle, doesn't actually slide off and out the calcaneus, this heel bone here. So it's a broad structure here. You can have a general feel around there for boggy thickened tissue to see if that's been overstressed. It's not normally overstressed unless it's a high impact injury that's forcibly twisting or impacting down and twisting. And the last thing we're going to consider on the inside here, the medial aspect of the uh, ankle for palpation, is the tibial artery. To find the tibial artery, you locate your medial malleolus, and your calcaneus, and you swoop somewhere in the middle, and you put two fingers like so, and you feel for a pulse. I would like you to bear in mind at home that this can be really hard to find in people, so don't panic if you can't find it. Put it together with your other subjective uh, symptoms and your objective findings to see whether it's relevant. And that concludes palpation of the foot and ankle in the lateral and medial views. So next we're going to consider palpation of the foot and ankle in a posterior view. If we start more proximally, looking at the gastroc heads, if the patient's complaining of calf pain, it's worth palpating in and around this region. And here, and it's very often that trigger points are lying just generally in the calf. And you can work your way down here and see if that brings on any exquisite tenderness or pain referral of their symptoms. Another common place for a trigger point is where the soleus muscle merges between the gastroc heads and is found around here. So that's a good place to check. Also, if the patient's complaining of uh, pain and swelling and on your observation you've seen redness around the calf, we do need to consider if they have a medical issue, i.e. a DVT, a deep vein thrombosis, and palpating in to the calf to see if it reproduces their pain. And obviously, if you suspect there's something like that and it doesn't fit your mechanism of injury, you need to be referring to a medical specialist for their care. So we've just considered a DVT and general trigger points in the calf. If we then move down to palpating the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon um, should actually be palpated in four places, which it commonly isn't. The first place really is you just want to get your fingers around just generally posterior to it and just have a feel and see if it's thickened, rough, reproduces their pain, if there's swelling. The second place is to loop in and in front. So we're kind of on the, the lateral anterior aspect of the tendon to see if that produces their pain. We're also swooping into the inside and the front, the anterior medial side of it to see if there's pain. And again, or swelling, thickness, any abnormality. The fourth final place to look is where the tendon inserts into the bone and it forms this kind of N shape, this lowercase N shape around here. And you can have a feel in and around the area. The, uh, as we would have talked in the other videos about, the ankle is deemed a very honest joint. So generally where the patient indicates their pain is, is where the structure that is being stressed is actually being stressed. So if the patient complains of pain around here, chances are when you palpate in that insertional point, that will bring them their symptoms. Moving down from here, we're looking at the fat pad at the back. And it's important to know that this is the fat pad back here and not the plantar fascia because there's no real way of treating this other than rest and ice and change of footwear or change of occupational conditions. Whereas if you move down to here where the plantar fascia is, well, this is different completely and you might be able to do an exercise regime or something to actually change this. It can be thicker to feel pressing in here. But again, reproducing pain is the key thing you're looking for. And that concludes palpation of the ankle foot joint in the posterior view. So here are the key points to summarize this video on palpation of the ankle joint. Break down your palpation of the ankle into an anterior and posterior view, ensuring you compare the affected and unaffected sides. When palpating your patient, look for deformity, swelling, laxity, tone, and most importantly, pain. You can also look for signs of specific pathology in each view as mentioned throughout the video. And that concludes our video on palpation of the ankle joint. 
From here, we suggest you look at our other videos in the clinical physio catalogue, such as observation of the ankle and resisted tests of the ankle. Guys, thanks so much for watching again. We'll see you again soon on Clinical Physio.